Good to have our buddy Ben Shapiro. It's been a long time, Ben. How are you, my friend? Hey, I'm doing well, Mark. How are you? Let me look. I am great. Thank you. All right, you got a very important and really intriguing new docu-series, The Divided States of Biden, that you can watch at thedailywire.com. Tell us about this. So we decided that we were going to take a deeper look into some of the biggest issues that the Biden administration has plagued America with. The first two episodes are respectively the borders. We went down to the Arizona-Mexico border and took a look at Joe Biden's border policy and what that actually looks like in person. And then our second episode, which just came out, is on the fentanyl crisis, which is very much connected to the border crisis. Over 100,000 Americans dying every single year now from fentanyl overdose. It's the largest drug epidemic in American history in terms of death. It is destroying entire generations of of young people, the number one cause of death for Americans between 18 and and 45. And and that is being facilitated by Joe Biden's policy with regard to the southern border, which is wide open, soft on crime, soft on China. And it's pretty obvious how to shut this down. Joe Biden just didn't do it. And why do you think he isn't doing it? I mean, I have given my opinion. Why do you think? I think that when it comes to the border, there there are a few reasons. Number one is that Joe Biden is captured by his far left. His far left legitimately believes that the United States is a bad country and that we owe it to the rest of the world to let everybody cross that border willy-nilly. And if that means that a bunch of drugs also come across that border, okay, then, then that's the way things are going to go. As far as why he doesn't crack down on China, uh, there's some pretty significant allegations made by Peter Schweitzer in this episode of the series about the connections between the Biden family and the Chinese government effectively The Biden family is about one degree removed from actual drug facilitating people in in China who are actively coordinating to set up the the Mexican drug cartels in the fentanyl business. So it really is corruption. It is is a possible rationale as well. And then on the other end, just this soft on crime perspective with regard to drug dealers overall, that has been a hallmark of the Biden administration. They are very, very soft on drug dealers, despite the fact that when it comes to fentanyl, very often what you're talking about is not fentanyl overdose. We tend to think of of drug overdose, we think of somebody taking heroin and taking too much and dying. When it comes to fentanyl, a huge number of people who are dying of fentanyl overdose never know they're taking fentanyl. They think they're taking a Xanax or an Adderall, and it's been laced with fentanyl, and people are dying because of that, which means these drug dealers are not just drug dealers, they're actual murderers. And yet Biden knows that, is he? That I, I, He's cold-blooded, isn't he, pretty much? Now, this is a dirty secret about Joe Biden as a human being. He, he's slid on this whole empathetic elderly uncle routine for quite a while in American politics. And when it comes down to it, Joe Biden cares about himself. He cares about his immediate family in terms of how much money they can rack in. But I think that the American people have seen really since the botched withdrawal from Afghanistan that this guy does not care about them. And last week was, again, great evidence of that. While he was with the the glitterati over in New York, President Trump heading on over to the funeral of a slain police officer. Joe Biden could have gone to that. He decided he didn't want to because that is who Joe Biden is. Joe Biden is about Joe Biden. And Ben Shapiro, here's the thing. It's very strange, and yet people have written about this who've lived through various totalitarian and genocidal regimes. He still may get half the country to vote for him, despite the fact that he's destroying the country and people's livelihoods. Isn't that weird? I mean, it would be weird if we weren't at the sort of end of something. And what we are, I think, in the United States is we're at the end of a, of a trend that started really in the Obama era. Uh, of, of separating Americans by race, separating Americans by creed and color, and, and then attempting to cobble together this sort of coalition of the oppressed. And, and everything that the Biden administration is, this coalition of the oppressed, plus some upper class white ladies who went to Wellesley. And, and that basically is the Biden electoral coalition. And, and that coalition, this is what unites all of the policies. It's also what unites all of the people. This is why you see obvious idiocies in the Biden coalition, like queers for Palestine. You think about that on any sort of raw level, and you say that that makes no sense at all. I mean, these are these are people who would immediately be murdered in Palestine uh, if Palestine existed. And the but but it makes perfect sense if you realize that this is a group of radical people who really hate American principles. And then there are a bunch of people who are just suckered by the media into believing that Donald Trump is the worst thing to ever happen to the country, and Joe Biden's going to save democracy. The, the media, I think, we prematurely have declared them dead about a dozen times on the right, but the media are still uh, a, a force to be reckoned with, particularly with regards to people who are in the middle. Or, or don't really watch politics all that often. They're still tuning in. They're still they're still paying attention to why the media are telling. Unfortunately, if people want to watch, and many of them do, your new docu series, where do they go exactly? They should head on over to DailyWire.com and get a subscription. You can watch it over there. We should have a, a third episode coming out soon. We go on the ground to Kensington, an area of Philadelphia, see what the drug 
problem looks like over there really is devastating stuff. Oh, my God. Like Kensington. All right. We're here with Ben Shapiro. Really one of the best of the conservatives as far as I'm concerned. <clears throat> used to come on this show. Hold on one second. Excuse me. I have cholera. Anyway, uh, and Ben is with us now. Ben, while I have you, did you ever think the Biden administration would be so guttural out of the closet day after day? hour after hour, trashing the state of Israel, the Prime Minister of Israel, funding Iran, arming Iran, arming their surrogates. Did you ever think this day would come like this? I mean, the only reason I thought that was a possibility is because Barack Obama really was pretty much the same, particularly in the last part of his administration. But the Biden administration's overt attempts to now undermine the government of Israel by lying about the state of Israel, what's happening on the ground in Israel, by lying about the government itself, I mean, it really is just a pack of, of lies that are, that are told to a bunch of idiots in the media who don't know anything. So when you hear Karine Jean-Pierre or, or, or Joe Biden or Chuck Schumer out there ripping on Netanyahu as though Prime Minister Netanyahu is the sole leader of the Israeli government and every decision is being made by him, that, that's not even true. There's a war cabinet in Israel that includes Benjamin Netanyahu, it includes his chief political rival, Benny Gantz, who if an election were held today would be prime minister. It includes Gadi Eisenkot, who's a member of Benny Gantz's cabinet and, and a member of his party. I mean, it, it, there is 75, 80 percent approval inside Israel for what Israel is doing in Gaza right now. The, if, if Netanyahu did not go into Rafa or Rafia, as it is in Hebrew, if they didn't actually go into that area, they would be thrown out. The government would be summarily dismantled immediately. So you know, all of this is, I think, an attempt by the Biden administration to buy off voters in Dearborn, Michigan, especially, uh, and to placate the radical left base. And the, the thing about this is that not only is it immoral, it's also political malpractice. The reason that Joe Biden is losing this election is not because of ticked off progressives. The reason he's losing this election is because of ticked off moderates. It's because Joe Biden decided that he was going to run as a moderate and then govern as Bernie Sanders. And so the, the, he's never going to be able to please folks in Dearborn, Michigan, by saying mean words about Netanyahu while continuing to fund both sides in the Iran-Israel war, which is really what you're watching right now. Everything that's happening right now, Hamas is a secondary player. Iran is funding Hezbollah in Israel's north. Iran is funding the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, which is in the Judea and Samaria, West Bank region of Israel. They're, they're funding Hamas, obviously, in, in Israel's south, in, in the Gaza Strip. They're funding the Houthis in Yemen, who are also firing ordnance at Israel. They're funding Iranian proxy groups in Syria, Lebanon, in, in Iraq. I mean, what we're watching right now is Iran has basically activated every tentacle of a terror octopus against Israel. And Joe Biden is now funding both sides. Literally, he's funding both sides. He's signing. He's allowing checks to flow in the, in the tens of billions of dollars to the Iranian government in the middle of, of this war. And at the same exact time, he's attempting to at least let, let enough military aid pass into Israel so that Israel isn't completely cut off because he understands on a practical level that if that were to happen, that would be horrible for American foreign policy. So. Again, like everything else that Biden does, it's just a complete muddle and it's a complete mess. And a mess is the worst thing that you can do in this particular area of the world where strength is the only coin of the realm. Now, I'm not asking this to be provocative. I discuss this all the time on this program, but I'm interested if you have a take on it. You have people like Dana Bash, Jake Tapper, Thomas Friedman in the media, who are some of the worst propagandists for Hamas and the left against the state of Israel. They're all at least ethnic Jews. I don't know that they actually are faithful Jews, that is, going to synagogue other than on the high holidays. There's a pretty, not perfect, but pretty solid split, isn't there, uh, in that respect in the Jewish community. And they're constantly attacking the quote-unquote religious zealots in the cabinet. I mean, most of them are just Orthodox Jews. You see that too, right? You live it. Well, yeah, I mean, there's clearly a massive divide in the ethnic Jewish community between people who actually care about the state of Israel, people who tend to keep Sabbath, for example, people tend to keep kosher, uh, and and people who are old line sort of reform conservative Jews, and then sort of younger Jews who really have no affiliation, and the younger ethnic Jews who really are not Jewish in any way. The, the, the best sort of comp would be lapsed Catholics or non-practicing Protestants who are born into a Protestant family and then just never go to church ever. Uh, that's what most Jews are. By, by the stats, Jews are the least religious, quote-unquote, religious group in the United States. And so it shouldn't be a shock that a lot of those non-religious Jews 
are effectively left wing secularists. And so, you know, looking looking to them for guidance, nothing annoys me more than someone who who doesn't practice any form of Judaism in reality pulling out the as a Jew card to then rip mm-hmm. on the state of Israel or uh, when, when it performs self defense. That really is quite gross. Like if, that's if you're Bernie Sanders. To, if, if, Oh, that's Bernie Sanders up and down. Bernie Sanders is, I've said this before and gotten flack for it, but it's reality. Bernie Sanders is Jewish as a ham sandwich. But mm-hmm. Bernie Sanders has, has no credibility whatsoever in declaring that his ethnic Jewishness is an excuse for him hobnobbing with the worst anti-Semites on the left. Yeah, it's pretty. And, and people need to understand, like, that Schumer speech. Uh, you know, you have uh, these Marxist Islamists in the Democrat Party who now take cover from Schumer's speech, like this guy Bowman the other day, correct? Oh, yeah. I mean, Jamal Bowman, a moron who can't tell the difference between a, a fire alarm and a door opener, apparently. Uh, that J- Jamal Bowman was out there suggesting that Netanyahu is the real obstacle to peace. Meanwhile, he's actively in a war with Hamas, which literally has been continuing to fire rockets even now into, into Israel. Hamas just turned down a ceasefire proposal from Israel in which Hamas would receive back 800 murderous terrorists, people with actual terror sentences for, for murder, in exchange for women and the elderly, largely. And that was turned down by Hamas. And to Jamal Mo- Bowman, it's, it's the Israelis, it's, it's Netanyahu in particular who is the problem. The reality is that, that Biden, all the rest of the left, they know this isn't Netanyahu. This is just anti-Israel. And, and this is why this whole ceasefire lie that's been promoted by the left has nothing to do with, with wanting peace or wanting a ceasefire. It is simply pro-Hamas propaganda, because in the end, again, Every single government of Israel that would be elected in this moment, and I think for the foreseeable future, is going to want to pursue its own self-defense. Because how could you not, after 1,200 of your citizens are murdered and another 250 are taken hostages? There are hostages sitting in Gazan tunnels under the auspices of Hamas literally right now. And I understand that the entire media have moved on from that. They don't care about that at all. But it is truly amazing to me that at the same exact time that Hamas is literally holding Israeli hostages, including five American by the way, American Israelis, that at that exact same time, the Biden administration is saying, how, how can we give these people a stake? Really, they, they need a stake. I mean, is there, any, is there any administration that has ever been remotely as weak on terror as the Biden administration has been? Has there ever been a secretary of state who's been as bad as Anthony Blinken, certainly in modern times? I, I mean, we, we have seen Hillary Clinton and John Kerry. That's a, that's a, that's a hard list. I mean, <laughs> yeah, he still outperforms sure. them as far as I'm concerned. He's done, a, he's done a terrible job, obviously. Listen, when, when President Trump left office, the world was not on fire. Now the world is on fire pretty much everywhere. And it's my, you know, my out-of-the-box call for the next few months is that if it really appears that Joe Biden is in serious trouble electorally by June, July, I would not be surprised to see China try some sort of blockade of Taiwan, figuring they better get going while the getting is good before Trump takes office. Mm-hmm. And Trump, you're uh, supporting him and either did or are doing a fundraiser, Correct. Oh, yeah, no, I gave him money. I mean, I, I co-hosted a fundraiser for him down here in Florida, got the chance to meet with him a little bit, which is always a fun experience. You know him, obviously. And mm-hmm. he, is, uh, he is definitely a character. Uh, and, um, you know, the, uh, this is a, it's a binary race. The, the race is between Donald Trump. I know what he will be like as president because I liked a lot of what he did as president. Uh, and I know what Joe Biden will be like as president because he's currently the president. So there are no mysteries in this race. I know the media are trying to create this sort of mysterious disaster that will occur on the other side of a Trump election. But here's the thing. We already know what Trump's presidency looks like. And at least for the first three years, it looked great. And then everybody got hit by COVID and the George Floyd riots. So 2020 was a bleep show, obviously. But the the first three years of the Trump administration were as good as any administration in my lifetime and mostly better. Mm -hmm. All right. So the docu-series, folks, is Divided States of Biden. You go to thedailywire.com. I want to encourage you to check it out. They've built a fantastic platform, you and Jeremy over there. And I want to wish you continued good luck, my friend. Hey, thank you so much, Mark. Really appreciate it. All right. God bless you. So the docu-series is The Divided States of Biden. You can watch it at dailywire.com. Now, episode one is the invasion of the southern border. Episode two is fentanyl, America's silent epidemic. And they actually went to the border. They did their investigation. They've done their analysis. They're doing the reporting. This is what makes, you know, The Daily Wire, The Blaze, all these groups different than CNN and the others. CNN is being handed press reports, data information from Hamas, and they do a long, entire story on it with photos and everything else about how the Israelis are blowing up the hospital. There are hundreds of dead bodies everywhere. The bulldozing bodies all over the place. 
And so then losers like Joe Rogan pick up on that. They're just not intelligent enough. They're smart about what they know, and they're not smart enough to know what they don't know. And they regurgitate it. And he's not the only one. I mean, it's the whole media. The whole media are doing this, with a few exceptions. That's the problem. 